So the granddaddy of modern audiophile streaming in the home, I think, is Rune. And I have Rune all over my house. Or rather, I have Rune endpoints all over my house so I can stream music to them. And I want to show you some of the, of the ways in which I do that today. So in my main system here at the moment, I have a pair of Denso Eclipse loudspeakers, and they are alternately powered by two different amplifiers. I've got the, the name Unity Atom here, and then I've got a Hegel H190. And I can stream to either of these. So the name Unity Atom is what's called Rune Ready. So the Rune code that asynchronously streams music from the server, so that means it controls the timing of the stream. The Rune code sits inside the Unity Atom. When it comes to the Hegel here, it's not Rune ready, but Rune can stream to AirPlay devices as well. So I, I can stream to its AirPlay circuit inside here. Alternatively, I can use an external Rune ready streamer. This is the Ultra Rendu I use here from Sonore, and that goes USB out into the DAC inside the Hegel amp. So two different endpoints here, streaming in different ways. And that's for loudspeaker listening. If you move over here, next to my couch, is my little sort of head fire rig here. And I've got an Aurelic Ares Mini, which is Rune ready. It does AirPlay as well, but because it's Rune ready, I can just stream directly to it. And that's sending a digital signal to the Chord Hugo 2 DAC. And then I listen with my headphones right here. So that's a little Rune ready head fire station right there. And then we have to go across the other side of the room. So over here, I have a name Muso. It is not Rune ready, but it has AirPlay, so I can stream Rune to it using the AirPlay functionality inside this. So that's pretty cool. But my favorite sounding Rune ready endpoint, actually by quite some way at the moment, is this thing down here, which is the Zenith Mark II SE. It's a server as well as it is a streamer but I use it just as a Rune ready endpoint um, because it sounds so good into a bunch of high-end DACs that I could connect in this rack here. Now we're gonna go to the kitchen. I have a pair of Sonos Play 1s. So Rune can stream to any Sonos device. They've coded it so it can do that. So I can stream music using Rune to my kitchen as well as my lounge room. So in my office area here, I run Rune on my MacBook Air and it sends a signal out to a MyTech Brooklyn Plus DAC. Alternatively, sometimes I stream from the Sonos Connect into this MyTech. It's also Rune capable, and it is outputting into a, a pair of very nice high-end active speakers. But before that, I just had my Care LS50 wireless on the desk, and they too are directly Rune capable. So I was streaming to these directly before. Now it's the MyTech from the MacBook Air into the Genelex. So the Rune iPhone app controls Rune streaming from the server to any of my seven zones inside the house that I've just shown you. So every Rune system needs endpoints like I've shown you before, but we also need a server that hosts the music and sends the music to those endpoints. The guys at Rune have sent me their new black box, which is called the Nucleus, which is a, essentially a, a plug and play Rune server. So we're gonna open this now, see what's inside. Got a bit dinged in travel, I think. So this is some kind of welcome quick start guide. And then back inside the box, lifting up this foam pad. And this is the server, I guess. It's quite heavy. So, a nicely machined piece of aluminium, or as Americans say, aluminum. Uh, Rune logo in the front. It's really quite nice, actually. It's, it's, it's very well made. 
And then on the back, our connectivity. So we have power socket, HDMI, Ethernet, and USB. And USB is for attaching a hard drive. So that there's no internal storage here for a, um, for a Rune library. You have to bring your own hard drive. Inside this box here will be a power supply. And lo and behold, a power supply. So they'll switch my brick like this. And the power cord for that. Even though there is no hard drive installed, pre-installed in this nuclear server, we can fit one ourselves. I don't have one to install, I'm gonna plug in a USB drive. But I think it's worthwhile having a look inside to see where that might go. We have the open nucleus and we can see inside exactly where a user would place their own two and a half inch hard drive or SSD right here. But I'm not gonna do that. So here we are under the spiral stairs in my kitchen, which is where I normally keep my, my rune server. It used to be a nook, but on this nook I had to install Windows and the rune software itself and configure it all myself. Um, that's now going away. I'm bringing in the, the, dedicate, the proper dedicated rune nucleus, which is a, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a single purpose device. This just runs rune server, unlike the Nook, which could run anything. And this runs a custom Linux with all the rune software pre-installed, ready to go. So this is really kind of an idiot-proof solution. This is for people that don't want to spend any time setting up a Nook or any other computer, installing software and configuring it. This is all done for, for us. So all I have to do now is connect my hard drive to the USB input. So here's my hard drive cable. Connect that there. Ethernet cable into here in the back. And then we need to add power. and then power it on. And it should be pointed out that this server here is, is not connected to any DAC or any hi-fi system. It's just connected to my network and it's streaming from my kitchen to all the other endpoints in the house. So I've installed the Rune remote app to my iPad. I've logged into Rune. So now Nucleus has found the hard drive, it sees it. I'm going to tell it specifically where to look for music. So in, mu in storage, in music, and select this folder. And now I have to add my title login details. So I'm going to go away and do that. So now I'm logged in into Tidal via Rune. And Rune is busy scanning the music library on the hard drive. If we go to the audio settings in this app, we can see that the nuclear server has discovered all of my playback zones, all of my room ready endpoints or my Sonos devices or my AirPlay endpoints. So I can enable these as I, as I need to, so I'm gonna go off and do that now. So these are my playback zones. I've nominated the Unity Atom as the one I wanna send music to now. And in Rune's discovery section, I've got um, a bunch of albums here and it's suggesting Daniel Avery's song for Alpha, so I'm gonna go with that. Click play. And the Unity Atom behind me should start up. And it is. Can even adjust the volume on the app here. I can skip tracks here. So if I want to skip the next song, click on that. I can pause it. What I really like about the Rune app is it makes it very easy to kind of navigate one's library. So even though I'm, at the moment I'm playing Daniel Avery, I can click on his artist name here, and that will show me a whole bunch of other information, including other albums by this guy. 
and also albums on Tidal in this section here. You know, the Tidal albums behave as if they're, they're part of my library, I can play them. So the, here's uh, an EP from a while ago. Click play on that and that will stream that directly from Tidal. I can hear it behind me. So this is what the Rune app looks like on the iPad, but it looks very similar on um, desktop devices like Windows machines, Macs. You get a more condensed version on mobile devices, we'll show those in a moment. And um, we can see that the Nucleus server is still scanning the library. You can see that's where all the, the cover art is whizzing by. This is the number of albums it's, it's discovered so far, tracks, artists, blah, blah, blah. Here's the menu over here. Um, we're, in, we're in overview right now, but if we went to genres, it would show different genres, you know, electronic, avant-garde. So here's Tidal. So this, so what Rune does is really reskins Tidal. So we can see new recommended top 20, masters for MQA if you want that. But that's if you want to look at them sort of separately, like if my own library is in, in overview, and then Tidal is here. But Rune also kind of joins them together as we've seen previously. So if I say, for example, search for an artist, let's say search here, and I want to go for like, let's say like lamb chop. So you see it finds it here. I can, I can browse title artists here. My own albums in, on, on the Nucleus server are here. So this tells me, and um, this is like, so the, the lamb chop artist screen, tells me a bit about the band or the band members. I'll come back to that in a moment, if they're touring at the moment. And then here we get to the albums that I have in my library. Scroll down a bit more. These are the albums that are on Tidal. So really everything's nicely, well, very nicely integrated in this sort of magazine layout. If I search for Destroyer. So Destroyer is Dan Bayer. So we've got a, this is Destroyer's biography, which is pulled in from all music, I think. Metadata pulled in. Also, if we go down here, or further down, we can see artists that are similar to Destroyer, um, artists that the Destroyer were influenced by, and then artists that they were kind of associated with. So I can expand that if I wanted to, because Dan Bayer from Destroyer was also in the New Pornographers. Now, I don't think I have any New Pornographers on my hard drive, on my Nucleus, which I don't think I do. No, I don't. So it's just showing me the, the title library of the new pornographers. So even though I don't own any of those albums, I can play them, I can see if I like them, and then I can decide whether I want to buy a download myself or even better, buy the vinyl. One of the great conundrums, as far as I can see, or one of the big problems of having a digital music library and only a digital music library is that it's, in, it's generally it's invisible. It just stores on a hard drive that, in my case, it's in my kitchen. So if I want to be reminded of albums that I've forgotten or I haven't played for ages, I go to the Discover tab. And this helps me rediscover my library again in a really nice magazine layout. So I might go, oh, I've not played that Built to Spill album in ages, let's play that. Or scroll down. Or here's a, you know, a fabric compilation, I might go for that. And sometimes, it's, you know, it's because albums have, were released 10 years ago on this, in this month or 15 years ago, or sometimes it's, they're selected randomly. Bit of future to the left, maybe I'm feeling a bit energetic and I want to punch in something quite lively. At the moment, my kitchen Sonos is the playback zone, so if I click play now, it'll play in the kitchen behind me. So you can hear that playing. If I pause that, change my playback zone to say the Unity Atom, which is in front of me here. So now that Unity Atom is the playback zone, click play now. The Unity Atom will turn on. And it'll take a couple of seconds and it starts playing. And you can see the cover art is displayed here, but also on the front of the Unity Atom. I'll pause that. I'm sure it's obvious by now that I don't listen to audio file music. David Bowie. David Bowie. So if I scroll down, you can see I've got lots of different versions of different albums by David Bowie. Um, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Singles and EPs by David Bowie. Also, you know, we know that David Bowie produced Transformer, so this is why he's, he qualifies for an appearance here and a production credit here. 
So this is an EP by 808 State. I could just play it now if I wanted to, but one of the really awesome things about Rune is I can select this little drop down here and I can click Start Radio and it will play through the Unity Atom. I can change the volume, set the volume down a little bit like this. And if I click Skip, so it's, it's doing a radio based upon the very first track. So now it's playing Brian Vision by Justice. Because we're in radio mode, it's playing songs that are similar to voice print. Now it's going to play Lindstrom and Prince Thomas. This is LFO, but Bjork nerds will recognize it as also the track that she used for B-side I Go Humble. So this is Nick Drake's Brighter Later, an absolute classic. Um, we can see that this was released in 1970. This is when I added it to my library, which is today, because that's when I fired up the Nucleus server. We can see that it's a 2496 file. It's the 2012 remaster, and this is what Rune has assessed its dynamic range here. But one thing that's really cool about Rune is it tells me exactly what's going on in the signal path. So it tells me that I'm streaming a 2496 file over to my Inuus server, and it's going out um, of the output of the Inuus server into a DAC that's connected but muted right now. Magazine, how very appropriate for a streaming software platform that has a magazine layout on a number of devices, like the Android smartphone and the two iOS devices I have here. And they allow me to interface with the nuclear server that's in my kitchen and tell it what content to stream to the endpoints around my house, which are some in here, which we've seen, Sonos in the kitchen, Sonos upstairs, the MacBook upstairs. It makes streaming very easy. It takes the nerdiness out of streaming and really just makes it a very pleasurable experience indeed.